Good morning. I am really excited to be delivering the assembly this week. I'm going to start off by talking a little bit about the piece of artwork that you can see in front of you. I would love to have been delivering this assembly in person, um, but obviously due to the new normal because of COVID-19, I'm actually delivering this virtually to you. So the piece of artwork that you've got in front of you today is called Wanderer Above the Sea Fog and your tutor may wish to pause the video to have someone in the room read this out. This was made by an artist called Caspar David Frederick and um, this was actually painted in Hamburg in Germany in 1818 so it's quite a long time ago and it's part of a movement of artwork called Romanticism so it's supposed to be a romantic setting and some think okay so some believe this might have been a self-portrait of Frederick um, but uh, we cannot be sure because we actually don't know what the artist looked like so um, this person is standing thinking okay so they're contemplating um, their life here and the music that you heard as you um, were listening to the beginning of this assembly, the title is Gloria and it was in D um, and it's Gloria in Excelsis Deo. So it's probably a song that you've heard before by Vivaldi, who is probably one of the most famous composers. In 1715, this was made. <laughs> And if I skip the track forward slightly. You probably really recognise that part of the song. So for those of you who don't know because you're new to the academy, i.e. you are in year seven or in year 12, you probably don't know uh, why I'm starting my assembly like this. But in the school, what we'd like to do is ensure that students have the opportunity to see a piece of art and listen to some music that perhaps they wouldn't do in their normal life to broaden your horizon. So every assembly will start like this. So the title of my assembly is called Invisible Pain. And um, I usually don't have the title of my assembly to be the exact title of the topic because I want to finish up talking about why I called it Invisible Pain. I wanted to say thank you before I do move on to Invisible Pain because actually this week, oh, last week I should say, has been, um, to, be, to put it, clear, you know, in one word is but an absolute crazy it really has been crazy you have all really pulled together and without all of your help i couldn't have had the school reopen so a massive thank you to all of you because where i'm standing recording this i can see different waiting areas I've got the year seven waiting area the year eight waiting area and you've all just clubbed together and done your bit and stayed um, away from the other year groups as much as possible to make the reopening as safe as possible so a massive thank you so I'm going to play a video and this video is um, called We All Have Mental Health. You can't tell how someone feels just by looking at them or what they share online. To the outside world, our lives may look perfect, even if in reality they aren't. I'm always worrying about doing well at school, and with the end of year test coming up, I'm not sure how much longer I can cope. My thoughts swarm around my head, sometimes keeping me up all night. Some days it's just all too much, and I feel like I'm lost in space. When I did badly on one of my tests, I just about kept it together until I got home. Then I broke down crying in front of my mum. She listened for a bit and then she told me that just like physical health, we all have mental health. It's our feelings, our thinking, our emotions and our moods. She then said that feeling down, angry and stressed is a normal part of life. Just like it's normal to feel happy, confident and carefree sometimes. We all have positive and negative emotions that come and go based on what's happening around us. These are everyday feelings. 
Good mental health means experiencing negative emotions. It's not always about being happy. Mum can relate to the feelings of stress. So when mum suggested I take a break from everything and do something I enjoy, I actually took her advice. So I made myself a hot chocolate, snuggled off in a duvet and watched a film. And you know what? Afterwards I felt so much better. Mum should take her own advice. Most of us only ever share the good things. We don't like to share how we really feel. Every morning when I wake up, negative thoughts stream through my head. Getting out of bed and pretending I'm okay takes all the energy I have. As the day goes on, the negative thoughts turn from a stream into a river. The water rushes through my head so loudly it's hard to concentrate in lessons. And some days it's so bad it feels like a waterfall that's trying to pull me over the edge. Everything is so overwhelming. I didn't think my friends would understand if I told them how down I was feeling. But when Sasha opened up to me about how stressed she was feeling, I told her. I wasn't sure how to bring up how I'd been feeling, so I started by saying that I didn't feel like myself. Just her listening made me feel like she understood. She told me some things that had helped her, so I tried them too, but it didn't make much of a difference. Even when I tried to be around my friends, I felt alone. The things I used to enjoy weren't fun anymore. I was really worried about Andre and not sure what to do. He was quiet and wasn't hanging out with us like he used to. So I asked our head of year for some advice. He suggested I get Andre to speak to him since his negative feelings weren't going away. I didn't want to speak to our head of year, but I also didn't want to keep feeling so down, so I went. He said that sometimes we have overwhelming feelings that can be more intense than our everyday feelings. These feelings hang around for a long time and change the way we feel, think and behave. They can stop us doing what we want to in life. That's what I was going through. He also said that if we're physically unwell, we let people know, we ask for help. It should be no different with mental health. Sometimes our overwhelming feelings are brought on because of things in our life. Sometimes they happen for no reason at all. After hearing this, I felt much less alone and it felt good to talk. Scientists have found exercise can help when you're feeling low. So our head of year encouraged me to sign up to the school football club, which Sasha was already in. I still have days when the river is there, but now I'm beginning to understand my mental health. I'm learning how to cope. Our head of year reminded me that my friends, family, teachers and lots of others at school are there to help just as much as he is. I had no idea the people around me could be so understanding. And while it's not always easy to talk about my mental health, the person I'm talking to might be able to help. If you don't feel like talking, that's fine. You could try writing, sports, reading, art, music, playing with your pet, whatever makes you feel better. If you're the person someone talks to when they're struggling, just listen with no pressure or judgment. You don't have to have the answer. If you feel unsure about anything, you can speak to a trusted adult. Talking about mental health doesn't have to be difficult. After all, it's something we all have. Thank you very much for listening to that video. Um, I actually went on a hunt for about 20 minutes to try and find um, the perfect video and something that would actually um, allow you to understand from your point of view, from young people's point of view, actually how mental health can affect you day to day, because that can look very different to an adult. Um, so what I'd like you to do is can your tutors please pause the video and I just want you to discuss what did that video mean to you and there's no right or wrong answer but what did the video mean to you? Okay so your tutor should have paused the video to go through that question with you as a group. So I just want to share some key statistics with you. This is actually from a mental health charity, one of the largest mental health charities that there is, and you've probably heard of it, a charity called Mind. And their website, mind.org, has a lot of statistics on there, which I found very interesting. So the first one is one in 40 people will actually suffer with depression. One in 20 will suffer with some form of anxiety. 
So that's the nervous feeling that you can have when you perhaps have a test coming up and you feel nervous. But anxiety is when you have that nervous feeling and sometimes there's no reason at all. And one in 10 of you may suffer with both. So I then took those statistics and I thought about how that relates to the entire school. So within the entire school, that means we've got roughly 25 students will have depression. 50 students will suffer with anxiety. Doesn't mean you'll have it for your entire life, but you might be suffering with it as you know, as of now. And 100 students, that's actually quite a lot, um, will suffer with a mixture of both. So more than one in 10 people may suffer with a form of mental illness, which doesn't include anxiety and depression, which are ones that people often talk about, but actually phobias. That's a genuine fear. That's not the same as not liking a spider. This genuine fear can be quite crippling and can change how you try and live your life. OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, panic disorder. So people that may have panic attacks more often than usual and a post-traumatic stress disorder so post means after traumatic means something that's bad so post is after traumatic is bad so post-traumatic means after a bad event you can feel quite stressed and then body image particularly with young people who are going through lots of physical changes and changes that probably just not quite comfortable with yet and that does change with time but those sort of normal body image issues that young people feel can actually develop into eating disorders and, and real body image issues. So I'd like your tutor to pause the video again because usually in my assembly I would be asking you this question but I can't hear your answers so your tutor will be doing this part so if your tutor can pause the assembly now and ask your tutees what do you think we would like you to have taken from this assembly? And again, there's no right or wrong answer. OK, thank you very much. Do you think that your attitude towards mental health may change after this assembly? And I want to just put in a line here of some advice. And I, I seem to have clipped the end of the sentence off. But what I would say is if someone, you know, a student wants to talk to you, don't rush to react and give them all the answers. You don't need to have the answer. Sometimes the other person just wants to talk and that's OK. You don't need to rush to find the perfect reaction. You just need to listen and just look out for one another. And a question, do you think that you're actually always as understanding as possible to friends when they exhibit psychological distress? That means when they show um, some sort of stress to do with their mind, because actually sometimes we're not as understanding and open minded as possible. So lastly, People don't want to talk about their issues. People don't want to talk about their mental health. They somehow think that's less important than their physical health. And I kind of don't really want to talk about physical health and mental health being two separate things. They're both just health. And I think with mental health, because people can't always see the physical signs of it, doesn't mean they're not there. When you have a cold and you're sneezing, people can see that and hear it. But when you're feeling anxiety, no one can see that. So I really want us to try and break the stigma. So please watch this very short clip. You know that feeling where your thoughts scare you or make life tough? Sometimes it feels like no one else in the world has those thoughts or feelings. No one seems to know how difficult it is to deal with your feelings. And it's not easy to share your deepest secrets. You might think something is wrong with you. Or you might worry what other people think. And all of that makes your thoughts and feelings worse. Our culture has created this environment of shame. Until the 1960s, society sent people away if they had challenges managing their thoughts, emotions, and behaviors. Over time, we learned that we didn't have to be afraid. 
we learned how to help people get better. We became hopeful. But there are remnants of those images in our culture today. Which is why some people still feel uncomfortable talking about it. The stigma has taken new forms too. With more access to more people all the time, it can seem like the world is telling us it's not okay to be anything but perfect. The truth is, everyone has thoughts or feelings that can be hard to deal with. So why do we make it so difficult on ourselves by judging others who could be going through the same challenges we are? What if, instead of seeing labels, we saw people who are struggling and could be there for them so they didn't feel so alone? What if we looked past our fear of mental health and started to talk about it in a constructive way? What if, as a society, we used empowering words and healthy images to help people feel supported? Maybe then, more of us could feel comfortable telling others when we're having a hard time. Maybe more people would get the help they need. And maybe one day, we won't have to talk separately about mental health and physical health, but just health. The truth is, each of us has the power to change our culture. Will you join us? Share this video with a kid, your neighbor, a friend, and help us break the stigma of mental health. Okay. So I want you just to think about this assembly and the title of my assembly was Invisible Pain. And you can probably gather why I've called it invisible pain, because some people are suffering with pain and no one can see it. That physical pain. That people see and it's quite clear people often call your physical health, but the invisible pain people often call your mental health, but it is still your health and still really important. So I'd like your tutor to pause this video for about 30 seconds and in fact they can turn it off and for 30 seconds I just want you to be still and just think is there someone that you might need to talk to about how you're feeling or is there someone that you need to listen to about that how they're feeling and you may not have done so before so your tutor's going to stop the video now so you can do it I wish you all a really, really good week. Thank you very much.